This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to be talking about polymorphism. And polymorphism practically means you can use one function with many different types of objects and it will handle them all accordingly, making your code more flexible and more reusable. And it's just one of those big words you need to get used to. Theoretically, you can code your entire life without knowing what it means, but it's just good to know what it means in case your fellow programmers talk about it. So let's get into a few examples of where you'll see polymorphism and how you can actually use it. Now to get started, let's use one of the built-in functions that uses polymorphism to make life a lot more simple on developers. And this will be the length function. As you know, it's going to calculate the length of any given object or of many given objects. For example, if we add the length of indently, it's going to count the length of that string. Otherwise, if we were to duplicate that and insert a list of elements, we can add one, two, and three, it's going to calculate the length of that list, which of course is going to be three because there are three elements in there. And we can even do this with a set. So one, two, three, and four for this set. And it's going to be able to give us back the total amount of elements in that set, which is four. So this is a great example of where you'll see polymorphism because we're using the exact same function with many different types making life a lot easier. Because imagine if we had to use three different functions, one called length string, length list, and length set. This would be incredibly annoying because it requires us to remember many different functions that do essentially the exact same thing. So that's just one major example of polymorphism. Another major example can be seen with operators. For example, if we were to print one plus one, we're going to get two back because that's grabbing the sum of these two integers. Otherwise, if we were to print hi plus Bob, it's going to concatenate those two strings using the exact same operator. So here we're using polymorphism through the operator because it works with many different types. And once again, we can even do this with lists. So one, two plus three, four. And when we run it, we're going to get a new list back with all the elements inside. And again, this is great because we didn't have to use different operators to perform the same action. But now let's take a look at a more realistic example. And for this, I'm going to import from ABC, ABC and the abstract method because we want to create an abstract base class. And here we're going to create something called class payment type, which is going to just be a model. So this will inherit from ABC. And here we're going to add an abstract method that we're going to create one method called process payment, which is going to take self and an amount of type float. And this will return none. And all we're going to do inside here is pass, or I'm just going to use the ellipses since it's my personal preference. Now, for those of you who don't know what an abstract base class is or what an abstract method is, I do have a video on that and I will link it in the description down below. But just to sum it up real briefly, this is just a model that all of our classes that inherit from it have to follow, which means if we have a class that inherits from payment type, it's going to be forced to use this method. And just to demonstrate that real quickly, we can create another class called credit card, since that is a payment type, and that will be of type payment type. And the first thing you're going to notice is that we're going to get some syntax highlighting, and it's going to tell you that class credit card must implement all the abstract methods. We cannot create this class without using this function. Otherwise, it's going to raise an exception. So what we're going to do is grab this function and place it right inside the credit card. And then our program's going to be happy. Obviously, we should still implement the details. So here we're going to type in processing credit card payment of dollars. And we're going to pass inside here the amount. That's going to turn it into an F string. Or I mean, PyCharm was smart enough to understand I wanted an F string here, so it added the F ahead. So remember that it's not going to do that automatically if you're coding on Notepad or in other code editors. Maybe it does it in Visual Studio Code, I don't know, but I'm digressing. Let's continue with creating some other payment types. So the other payment types we're going to take or that we're going to accept are going to be cash. So processing cash payments of that amount 
and the best one of all, which is going to be called an IOU, something that you never have to pay back. So processing IOU payment of that amount. Now let's create a function that uses polymorphism to accept all of these payment types. So here we're going to create a function called checkout, and it's going to take a payment type of type payment type and an amount of type float. That's going to return none. Then what we can do inside here is type in payment type dot process payment with the amount. So now we can pass in any payment type we want, whether it's a credit card or a cash payment or an IOU. All of those are going to be accepted, making this much easier on our program. I mean, the alternative would be to create three different checkout functions that all handle each payment type respectively. But that's a lot of work for no reason. So next what we can do is create some instances. So we're going to type in credit card of type credit card is going to equal credit card. And we have to do the same thing for the other two. So we have cash of type cash will equal cash. And finally, IOU of type IOU equals IOU. So we have our objects here. And finally, we can type in checkout with our payment type, which will be a credit card. And here we can pass in 100. Otherwise, we can pass in some cash with a value of 50. And finally, we can also do IOU with a value of 1000, because that's money you'll never see again. Now, when we run this, you'll see that it's going to work perfectly with all of these payment types. So first of all, we're processing credit card payment of 100 and I absolutely made a huge typo there. So let's go fix that credit card. So processing credit card payment of $100, processing cash payment of $50 and processing IOU payment of $1,000. So this worked seamlessly with all of the payment types. And that just made using this function a lot more convenient for other developers. But yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. I showed you some of the advantages of using polymorphism and what it practically is. I mean, it makes your code much more reusable and much more flexible, which can help make everything much more convenient to use. So let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any more questions or comments. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.